and welcome to another Sanctuary Sunday. Sanctuary! Yes, the day where I try to cover something other than war games. And today, I'm doing an exploration of horse racing games. Is there enough horse racing games to do a full exploration? Well, dare I say, yes. Uh, these are not all of my horse racing games. I think these are most of them, though. Um... And this is not even a drop in the bucket of what is out there to uh, to enjoy yourself with. There's a lot of horse racing games. Now, uh, earlier today, I did a unboxing of Longshot, the uh, dice game, which is based on, uh, I think it's a translation of a original game, Longshot, to a dice game, uh, which is a very good game. Again, I don't have that one, but I have played that one. And uh, when I was getting ready to do the unboxing of Longshot, that is what gave me the idea of, well, let's do an exploration of horse racing games because I've played several over time, collected a few here. Um, I know I have some hidden on the shelf somewhere else, but uh, I thought I, this is a good way to start. Uh, and with that, I'd like to start with the one that I started with, which is Win, Place, and Show. Win, Place, and Show. Now, this game was uh, published by Avalon Hill and was kind of part of their Sports Illustrated line. Uh, Avalon Hill you know, came into being basically as a, uh, well, or was known for its war games. Uh, and the uh, designer, Charles S. Roberts, and founder of Avalon Hill. But Avalon Hill uh, quickly branched out into a lot of other type of areas and had... Um, a pretty complete catalog of war games, uh, sports games, uh, and other type games that you know we would probably classify in the uh, hobby or Euro and Ameritrash type uh, segment uh, today. Now, when Place and Show, I, I got this back in the oh early '80s, possibly even the late '70s. I know I think I got this in the early '80s, um, and uh, is you know, my favorite uh, racing game for the longest time. I played the living daylights out of this game. Uh, and it uh, mainly played it with, you know, a couple of people. You can actually play this solitaire, not as good of an experience because it really uh, shows a lot of the, it really requires a lot of the characteristics of a lot of horse racing games, which, uh, as I mentioned in my long shot video, you know, there's there's certain elements of a, of a horse racing game that separates it from other racing games, whether that be you know cars or boats or or what have you. In horse racing games, there's usually a gambling element. Not in all of them, but in the most of them, there's a gambling element. So there's an aspect of the game that is racing, and then there's and and trying to maneuver on the course or the track. Then there's an element of betting, uh, whether you're betting on your horse or buying a horse or a stable of horses that you think can win, so you're going to get the purse or get a piece of the purse. And then the third aspect is just gambling on the field, right? You you might not bet on your horse. You might bet on some of the other horses uh, to win the game, and you get, uh, uh, you get uh, winnings from that as well. So uh, there's usually these three different elements of, of racing, of uh, owning ownership of horses and then betting on horses. And you can, of course, bet on your own horse too. Uh, and Win, Place, and Show has all those elements. Uh, and the other thing about uh, horse racing games that they that lends themselves uh, to, they, they lend themselves to party games or to multiplayer games. Uh, the more the merrier, right? And a lot of, you know, you can usually have, uh, a lot of games have like eight horses uh, that you can race or some number of horses. So you, you can have you know eight people or actually more, you know, somebody's going to be left out on ownership of a horse in a race. And, but usually you limit it to a certain number of how many horses you have racing because then they can control that horse, own that, own the horse, uh, control the horse that they own. Plus they can bet on other horses as well. And then you place a series of races and then, um, uh, you know, you kind of add up all the winnings at the end of it and see how that goes. The other thing that I liked about Win, Place, and Show is this will get in the box here. You can see some of my bits that I've had over the years. Of course, yeah, it had paper money. 
um, is the historical nature of it. Now, this uh, this was the the program that came with it, and it was kind of neat little uh, program. So these were the, this is the series of races that you're going to uh, race here. Your first race, second race, all the way up to the sixth race. Uh, these are th this you played up to six, right? Because you had six horses in each race. Um, but there was a historical aspect of, of win, place, and show. Now, these are just regular horses in here, and you can play this as much as you want. But over time, uh, they issued a lot of all-star replays, which was kind of uh, Avalon Hills house organ to fo focus on Sports Illustrated games or their sports games line. Uh, and I, I did a segment on uh, all-star replay when I did my basketball uh, exploration uh, cause I picked this up for, I picked this up for what's on the cover here, title bout, cause I like the historical boxers and I haven't done boxing yet, but spoiler alert, I'll do that at some point. Uh, but the main, the other reason I picked these up was for horse racing, uh, because they uh, had historical, uh, horses in here. You know, of course they had historical basketball teams, baseball teams, football teams, and all the like, but I started picking these up for the historical horses in here. Uh, so not so much, you know, for the gambling aspect to gamble on them, but to do historical races, you know, and, and, and there was supplements that came in here. Uh, there was usually articles that had, uh, the stats for historical horses or rules for different types of, of horse racing. Like this one I here had, um, I think this had, uh, was this cheap uh, quarter horse racing. So here's a whole article on quarter horse. And then you have, here's the 1974 all American, uh, Futuridity Rudocio Downs in New Mexico race there. So, and you had all the, the different stats for those horses. A very, really short race there, as you can see. So, uh, and then here's the betting and the payoff and all that other stuff. So each one of these all-star replays would have, uh, usually had an article about some historical race or some historical um, horses. And they had some inserts too that you could, and I might have put them in here, uh, that you could pull out and... Um, you know, do historical races uh, with 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 you know the, the you know the Secretariat and Sea Biscuit and stuff like that, uh, War War Admiral stuff like that. That 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 was something that really attracted me to this game, was the historical nature of it. Because you know, again, I'm at heart a war gamer, so the history was something that was interesting here. But um, so win, place, and show. Uh, you know, you had, you had your money, the bet. You had your race cards or your betting sheets here. On who you're going to bet and had lots of those um of course i started making up some of my own horses there i think there was a uh um in one of the all-star replays they they a lot of times they did like a, a role-playing aspect of certain games like you can make up your own basketball players you can make up your own boxers uh, there was a whole role-playing aspect of that then you can make up your own horses or there was a way to make up horses in a way to have your horse develop over time. And I think I, I did some of that as well. That's in one of those all-star replays. So there's the original dice that came with it. You've got these little uh, horses to keep track of your position on the uh, track. The rules were not that complicated here are the rules. And you go, here's, here's some of those supplements I was telling you about. Like here's great thoroughbreds of the past, you know, from the, from the 1950s, 1960s, 1970s. You know, there's Secretariat right there. Seattle Slough, Affirmed, you know, some Triple Crown winners in here. And uh, and basically the way the game works, I mean, here's your odds to bet, and that's going to tell you uh, when you place a bet if they win what you're going to get. And then these uh, tra things up here are, uh, or these boxes up here, that's your movement for that turn. So on the first turn, Secretariat was a notoriously slow out of the gate, so it moves one movement. You know, where Ruffian here is like 14, so it's a it's a fast burner right here. And so, and then this is the movement points as the gate uh, as the race goes on. And if you know if you're on a if you're on a fast track, then um, you might not get to some of these later turns or these later boxes because the race might end before you get there. Uh, if it's a muddy or slow track, well then you know that's going to serve you know, somebody who has you know, who's a strong finisher because then you might get to those. Uh, get to those boxes later on and there's like a bonus number and that uh, bonus number uh, lets you do like an extra movement or something like that um and then you get the kind of the ratings on here you know their class and their speed and stuff like that so um this was uh this is this is an aspect i really liked about with the like the, these historical horses uh, uh over time here uh, there's man of war there uh 
citation. You know, here's the 1890s and 1900s and 1910. So, I mean, and, and, and a lot of times there was articles in the All-Star Replays that, you know, this came in one of the All-Star Replays, but there was also uh, an art, uh, articles that would cover different races or different periods and different horses and the like. So that's one reason why I really liked, um, you know, the All-Star Replays that went along with this because uh, it uh, it made um, it made the game to me uh, – uh, gave me gave it an extra feature for it. So the board, basically, there's three boards. This is your typical Avalon Hill mounted board, uh, but it basically is just a track here, uh, and you had three pieces, you know, two ends, uh, you know, for the rounding or the co or corners, and then a centerpiece with the straightaway. But on the middle, it was all the betting and and all the different odds and what you win and bet and everything. So you didn't have to do a lot of math. It's all kind of pre-calculated for you. You also had your a thousand dollar bet pays so like on a three to two a thousand dollar pet pays whether you win place or show it tells you what you had there you know again so this was at its heart a, a betting game and a gambling game and trying to figure out what horses uh can do that but you had this board you had a track on where you could move and these lines here uh it's been a while since i played this but these lines here were like i think blocking lines or 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 kind of sl slowed you down or something like that i can't really remember what those are it's been a while but um but there was features on the track, that only on this one here, that might affect movement. But then you're basically moving, and you can get blocked in. So if you, if you, if you're uh, stuck behind like you know two horses here, well then you know, unless, unless if you can't have a clear path to move out to this lane to get around them, you're stuck there. And so there's there's this whole decision of whether you move out to the outside. Of course, moving the outside is slower, and moving the inside is quicker, but it gets more crowded, and all the other features that you would have in a typical uh, you know, racing game uh, would, would would come into uh, play there. So the, the, this was again uh, kind of the grandfather of racing games. Uh, it really a lot of the the ones that came after it have a lot of these same features of owning horses uh, uh, and then getting purses based on your ownership and then betting on horses uh, and getting money based on that. Uh, and as you can see here, the, these became a really nice. Um, you know, they, they, these lent themselves to like a party game. You know, if, if you have, you auction off horses and, you know, I mean, you could have more than six people play and somebody just misses out on, on owning a horse. They don't get the purse, but they can still bet. So you can have a, uh, there's no limit to the number of people that could play this game. Uh, it's just that, you know, not everybody's going to be able to own a horse because they're limited to six in there. So that is win, place, and show, which was augmented heavily by uh, all-star replay that added a lot of different uh, historical elements and horses to the game. Next one up is Home Stretch, Race to the Finish. Um, this follows in the same kind of vein as uh, Win, Place, or Show. This is uh, 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 ownership, uh, betting, and uh, racing game. So you're going to be focusing on the race itself, but there's also a, a gambling component to it. Uh, this is done by Frank uh, DiLorenzo. And I have a signed copy. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't think I've ever met uh, Mr. DiLorenzo, but uh, maybe I did. Anyway, so I have a signed copy of this. Um, but uh, it's it's a little bit uh, more. Uh, it's this is not as complex as Win Place and Show. Win Place and Show is not a complex game at all. But th this is uh, kind of a simplified version of the betting. Uh, and this one really one of the key elements of this one. It has different race tracks. So you have these racetrack cards that kind of change play uh and as you can see here you have the owner share cards uh the horses are little minis you got handicap tokens player tokens bet tokens and scoring cubes you know so the and the rules here are not uh that complex or overly extensive here uh but uh, it's it's a it's a good uh game that uh you know, takes a little bit of uh, the maneuvering that you have in win, place, or show, which there is quite a bit of. As you can see there, some of those, ra if the race is a long race, there is a lot of 
movement and 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 uh, positioning during the game this one you know there, you have bigger areas so there's not as much of that this game doesn't focus on much as that this kind of reduces that aspect and reduces the betting down to a little bit more of a, a straightforward concept as well so if it, it, it's uh has some of the same features but yet does it in a very different way here are your horses you know nice little minis there it's got cubes, it's got counters, uh, and then you have some cards here. Here's some, the, here's some of the racetrack cards here that change up the um, change up the play a little bit and uh, and the like. And there's quite a bit of those. Uh, there's quite a bit of variety in there. And so that's a different way to change the game out a little bit. There's some dice hidden there, and the owner share cards and the like. So there you have it. That is home stretch the uh the next one i wanted to cover which is kind of a simplified version of win place or show uh and uh but but uh plays a little bit quicker as well then the next one i want to talk about is change horse which is a little bit different this is uh it's a racing game but it's not this is where it deviates from uh the previous ones i talked about the the gambling is not uh it's not about winning, it's about uh, losing in this game. <laughs> you you want to be the last horse in here, and you're kind of, it's a, it's more of a take that kind of game where you're forcing the other ones to, um, the other um, players, you know, you're moving them along. And here's the track. So there's a little bit more maneuvering on this track, as you can see here. But there's uh, a lot of take that cards in here. This one came with little interesting minis here. You can see here. Kind of a interesting take on that. Um, and I think I put all the components in the uh, in the side here. Oh, those are, I think there was a, a Rada or something, and I got some change. Here's all the cards here. I probably should bag those. I'm usually a bagger, but the, but there's there's some take that cards in in this game. Uh, this is uh, more of a you know trying to jockey and position yourself to to not necessarily win the game and change horse. There's that's one of the things you can change horses in the middle of the game on horses that you're controlling or owning and for someone else to have it. Uh, so it's one of those things where you're, you're trying to lose in some respects. So a, a definitely a different take on horse racing, but, but an interesting horse racing game nonetheless. Uh, as I said before, I, I covered long shot in an earlier video. I'll put a link to that uh, down below uh, in the description. But this again follows a lot. This follows in the same vein as, um, you know, win, place, or show, and home stretch where you're owning a horse, you're betting on horses, and uh, you're getting money based on that, and that's the the goal of the game. Uh, but this is a, this is a dice based game, so there, there's a little bit of a roll and write element to this game, where you're rolling the dice, and that's determining certain things. Plus, the the horses have special abilities uh, that's going to come into play. Uh, and some of this stuff's kind of hard to get out here. And you have a player board here, and it's it's uh, you have a uh, dry erase markers, and so you can write on this player board. This is easily it's kind of have a coating on it, um, but you keep track of stuff on this board as you play the game and mark off stuff. And everybody has a player board. It plays up to eight people, and it, it is solitaire as well, so it plays one to eight, which is you know I like. Um, and here's your horses that go on the board. There's these nice big thick wooden chunks here uh as i said it can play up to eight uh, and again it, it does follow a lot of the same uh, uh aspects of ownership and betting and uh, controlling a horse during the race and as you see the board is not that elaborate uh of you know for, for as far as tactics and positioning but there is some of that and then each of the horses have their own different special abilities and you get three different uh, sets of them so there's three number ones three number twos on down to three number eight so you there's a little bit of ch choice of 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 the different horses so you're just not playing with the same eight horses all the time so anyway so that is um long shot the uh dice game and again it's based on an original originally a board game uh and i i again i don't own that but i, I did play that way back in the day and i thought it was it was pretty good uh pretty good game so uh and a lot of people are talking about this as being an excellent uh dice game so now let's go to what else do i have for a horse racing game well i've got let's go back to ancient rome and talk about horse racing there with charioteer and ben Herved or been hurt. Um, 
This is, um, uh, I've, I've covered this game, and I'll put a link to that uh, down below in the description as well. But this is uh, Chariot Racing. So this is the old Ben-Hur movie. Uh, you're, you're, uh, both these games are focusing on uh, racing uh, chariots uh, in ancient Rome. Uh, so there is a race element to this, but there's also, in these games, there's a little bit of a, a combat element to these games. Uh, hence the Ben Hurt uh, type element there. This is a cheap ass game. Uh, <laughs> I'm not trying to be derogatory. This is really uh, uh, the name of the company was Cheap Ass, and and their whole business model was putting out uh, good games with, uh, but but not not doing the full production because everybody has pawns and dice and paper money and tokens from you know their old monopoly game or their old life game or you know sorry or whatever hat whatever have you you know there's there's all these components out there from all these other games why do they need to put all that in a box and there's a cost to doing that so they just did the game so it's the rules and it's the components that you that are unique to the game uh, and that's how you play their games, and that's why they were called cheap ass games because they were typically cheaper to uh, to produce, and and the price point was really pretty small too. And and this uh, was one of the ways I got back into gaming. You know, I was a war gamer, and then um, and then a role player, and then a uh, somewhat of a not as much of a board gamer. I, I was well, actually, I guess I should I should say I was a board gamer first. Uh, with your clue and risk and all that and chess and then uh, then I was a war gamer then a role player and then I went off to college and came back and got into magic a little bit uh, and then I got into uh, board games proper mainly through this cheap ass I saw some of these I was like what the heck is that and I started looking at them and they were really interesting games that the, they're they're really focusing on the game mechanics and the theme uh, and that's it I mean they're not overly complicated they're not you know they're not the uh, the, the, the glorious production value in any respect, but they were very interesting games. And so I started getting back into this and through these, through this, uh, starting to follow these, I got found Board Game Geek and then found a bunch of other games and then found my way back into Wargaming. So anyway, long story short, sorry, not too short. Anyway, so that's cheap ass games. Uh, so this is a horse racing game, but this is not as serious as, well, neither one of these are a serious treatment of horse racing. Um, uh, or chariot racing. Uh, this one is a little bit more tongue in cheek and uh, talks. And there's a little bit more combat and and take that element in this game. This game right here, there's some take at that element in this game, but this has a unique uh, card system and how you use cards and 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 match cards to move around the board. But it, there is some combat in, in this as well. This is relatively abstract, but a but an excellent production value and a very interesting game and, and a fun game to play. I played this uh, with a, a group of people and everybody enjoyed it. Anyway, take a look at the video in the description if you want to know more about that. So. There you have it. That is uh, my take on uh, horse racing games. Again, this is not the end-all be-all of all the horse racing games that are out there. These are just the ones that I was, you know, pulled off my shelf in a moment's notice to uh, cover some horse racing today or do an exploration of horse racing today. Anyway, I don't know how I'm going to put this on there without this falling down. But there you have it. That is my exploration of horse racing. Love to know your thoughts. What games have you played? What games am I missing? You know, what games uh, that are are much better than these or different than these that uh, that, that you like and play? Uh, throw, feel free to throw those in the comments and talk about those as well. Or if you love or hate uh, any of these, feel free to put that in the comments as well. All I ask you just to be civil um, and, uh, and, you know, interested in your thoughts. Anyway, thanks all for stopping by. Take care.
Thanks for watching.